He has not given to us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus, for a sound mind today as we come to the Word. <laughs> Nothing like having a good sound mind before we preach the Gospel. Get everything clear. What are we going to preach today? Ready? Okay, so there's the Bible reading, Psalm 30, verse 12. And then we've got another beautiful reading, Matthew, chapter 15, verse 32. Okay, so we're going to have a good day today, aren't we? <laughs> okay, before we do that, let's have a look at this. 7th of March, 2020. 7th of June, that is today, that is three months, different time, and we'll come back to that later and let's find out what I'm talking about there. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. All right, let's get straight into the reading, Ronnie. They're mucking around today. Don't worry about turning your big world around. You always do that, don't you? Don't do that today. Just... We've got some beautiful flowers here today. Just admire the flowers. I'll turn the flowers around for you. Okay, do you like the flowers? <laughs> Nothing like a nice bunch of flowers. Even though it's not Mother's Day. It's your day today. This is your day. Okay. Alright. We'll start off with the... Uh, oh, I've got it already turned up to Matthew, but... I think I'll go back to Psalms 30. Psalm 30, and then we'll... Uh, Go back to Matthew. Yes, is everybody having a good week? Nothing like having a good week. I've been praying for you all week, especially those people with those sore backs. I hope your backs are better now. <laughs> I looked at them, I'd have to do some more praying if they're not. Get out of your bed, all those sick people. Are you all out of bed today? Prayed for you last time. You should all be out of bed, praising the Lord now. Okay, Psalm 30. Verse 12. It's a beautiful psalm, but we'll just look at verse 12. So I will not be silent. I will sing praise to you, Lord. I will sing praise to you, Lord. You are my God. And I will give thanks for ever. <laughs> Notice that word ever. How long is ever? It's a good word, ever, ever. I will give thanks to the Lord forever. For what reason? Why would we want to give thanks forever to the Lord? Because we're up in heaven, that's why. We're in the house where there are many mansions. Jesus said, if I go away and prepare a place for you, and if it were not so, I would have told you, in your Father's house are many mansions. How many mansions do you want? I asked that question a long time ago and no one's replied yet. Can't you reply? Get the fingers out and reply how many mansions you want, how long you want to live, how long is eternity? As the psalm says, I will give thanks forever. <laughs> oh, some of you people, you might be getting sick of my loud voice from time to time, but you never complain. I must say that, you don't complain, there's only one person that complains, but he's, he's our friend. We love our friend who complains every week. <laughs> we'll get him saved. Don't hurt things on you. Praise the Lord. Matthew 30. So we're going to praise the Lord forever. It is a good thing to praise the Lord. Oh, I haven't got much to praise the Lord for this week. I haven't got any money and I'm hungry. My business has run down. No, it's not. It's going to come good now. We'll look at that word there. Oh, the 7th of June. We'll see why it's going to come good now. Have a look at that. Okay, let's go over to Matthew. Beautiful Matthew. He is a good writer. He, is a, he was a good watchman, wasn't he? He looked around and followed Jesus. Jesus is doing healing the sick and raising the dead. Oh, Matthew. So what's he got to say in chapter 15? All right, let's read it. Verse 32, Matthew 15, 32. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel sorry for these people because they have been with me for three days and now have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away without feeding them for they might faint on their way home. 
the disciples asked him, where will we find enough food in the desert to feed this crowd? That's a big problem there, all this crowd. They've been listening to Jesus. They, they couldn't hear, they were listening to every word that Jesus spoke. They soaked it up like a sponge. Are you soaking, soaking up the word of God this morning like a sponge? Or is your mind, your heart so stony cold, stone dead? There's people around you know, when I go out and preach the gospel in the street. Oh, I've got me preaching hat. Must be getting ready for going out again, Roddy. Yes, I am. I'm going out very soon. I think I made an appointment with Scarborough skating people. I think we'll go and see the skaters, the young people. I like the young people. They're great, the young people, aren't they? All the skaters. Okay, so I've got the hat on ready to preach. Okay, let's get on with the word. The disciples asked him, how much bread have you got? Verse 34, Jesus asked, how much bread have you got? <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe we could, uh, I could ask you that. How much bread have you got? How much goodness have you got in your cupboard? How much have you got in your heart? Is your heart full and overflowing with the joy of the Lord or are you full of sadness and grizzle? You're a grizzled guts. I've met a lot of people in my time. I know how people think. I've known a lot of families, got a lot of relatives, believers and unbelievers alike. And I meet a lot of grizzled guts. I served my apprenticeship with, uh, what was there, a five year, five and a half year apprenticeship as a motor mechanic in the uh, motor trade. Five, five and a half years I worked with a well, hundred men, they were the biggest in Perth, biggest in WA, big workshop, over a hundred men. And they're all different, from all different work, walks of the life. <coughs> all different walks. <coughs> oh, Ronnie. <coughs> you got a sore throat today. Must be doing much preaching. <laughs> I healeth all my diseases. Oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah, I have got a sore throat actually. Don't know how that come about. <laughs> well, I preached pretty hard on that smoking. Oh, that's what it was. I preached on the smoking. Oh, co oh, oh, did the cough, cough, didn't I? Give up the smoking in how to give up the smoking in 10 minutes. Look up that uh, video that was on last week. That's a good video. Okay. So how much bread have you got in your little cupboard? In your little heart? Your little tiny heart? How much have you got in your little tiny mind? In your little noggin? Have you got the grace of the Lord Jesus? Have you got his salvation? Shaking right through your body. You're full with the bread. The bread of life. Jesus is our bread of life. So Jesus asked the disciples, how much have you got? The disciples said in verse 34, seven loaves, they answered, and a few small fish. <laughs> That's not going to go very far, Roddy. I've had a few parties. In fact, in this uh, building here, this is my workshop and my annex, we've had a lot of parties in here. The kids, when they were 21, we had, what, 50 people in here. We had to organise, we had to organise all the food. We had to have a um, jukebox hired in. They wanted a jukebox for their 21st, for their birthday parties. Got the three kids growing up. Uh, they had all their mates around and this joint was full. <laughs> they weren't praising the Lord, they were, they were singing rubbish on their jukebox, okay. Alright, and of course a lot of us are still doing that. We have, we're have we still trying to, to live in the world, aren't we? The pleasures of sin. They, they, people love the world. Okay, we've got three, uh, a few, which probably three, few is usually considered as three, small fish. I bet they were feeling a bit miserable when the Lord asked, what have you got? Sometimes the Lord asks, what have you got? And we think, oh, I haven't got much, Lord. I don't give out any tracts. I don't share the gospel. I'm a miserable little Christian. I just warm a pew, come in and sing a song, go home. Watch Days of Our Lives or some other rubbish on the TV. Maybe a bit of that stupid basketball, football, wrestling. You know what you watch. I don't know what you watch. 
Now, I don't care what you watch, but you can watch me. <laughs> you can watch my videos, and you can put like or dislike. I don't care if you put dislike and say I hate you, because you tell me the truth. <laughs> In fact, I'd, I'd sooner you put bad things than good things. I don't want anyone to pray me. Put, oh, Roddy, I hate that stupid hat. Why don't you take it off and throw it away? No, I've got a cold. It's cold in here today, so I've got a big coat on. It's quite cold. I'm quite happy with my hat. Thank you very much. But thanks, thanks for the offer. <laughs> oh, we've only got a few small fish. So Jesus ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks to God. Okay, underline that. He gave thanks to God, broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and had enough. It's terrible when all these people came to this party, these 21st that we had, and they, there wasn't enough food. But we always made sure there was enough food. There was food left over. Oh, just like here. And they all ate and had enough when the disciples picked up the seven basket full of pieces left over. Just like our party. <laughs> there was always food left over for a couple of days. They ordered too much food. My wife's like that. She always overdone it, does it. I say, no, you won't need all that, darling. You've got this, you've got the turkey, you've got the chicken, you've got the Kentucky Fried, you've got the pizzas all coming. What more do you want? <laughs> Okay, so here we have the same situation. Nothing's changed. Everything's the same. The same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same loving God. This is the one who gives us more than enough. So the Lord's given you more than enough, and stop your grizzling. I've had enough of it. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. God, praise the Lord. Remember I said last time, I've got to bang this with my hard, heavy-duty, good news Bible. The good news. I, I preach the good news and the bad news. You're getting the good news today. No hell today. No one's going to hell today. You're all going to be saved. I can see that sticking out a mile. You don't want to go down there. Then the disciples picked up seven baskets full of pieces left over. More than enough. Jesus is more than enough. Can you get that into your little thick skull? Into your skull and then go down into your heart. That Jesus is more than enough. He will see you through whatever situation. I don't care if you're going through a divorce. I don't care if you're, if you're sick in bed. Jesus will raise you up. He is more than enough. More. More. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. More than enough. I feel like spinning that world, but I'm not going to touch it today because I said I'm not going to spin the world. Just look at the flowers. <laughs> Just look at the flowers. Aren't they lovely, the flowers? Who made these flowers? Can you make flowers? Of course you can't. Can you make fish? No, you can't. But God can do all things. He can save the most sinful soul. Even if you're at the... You're in jail now. Some of you might be watching from a jail cell. There's hope for you. I don't care what you've done. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest for your souls. Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know there's one of my uh, workmates. Uh... Yes, I worked with him for about three years in the finance, insurance, superannuation. I was, uh, <coughs> <coughs> did that throat? <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, Lord, what's this sore throat? Even the best of us get sick sometimes, don't we? I worked with this chappy, uh, a lovely chappy. He was actually the, my <coughs> boss. But he um, somehow got into some drugs, okay? So he's carting drugs around. And um, the police got him. The police will eventually catch up with you if you're breaking the law. And he got nine years. It was a long time, nine years. And he's in jail at the moment. So all those people in jail, Jesus 
still loves you. His grace is more than enough. They had more than enough food. Jesus' love and grace for you is more than enough. And the disciples picked up seven baskets full of pieces left over. The number of men who ate were 4,000, not counting the women and children. 4,000, so you could double that. Just about double that. Those 4,000, so you're looking at 8,000 people. That's a lot of people to cater for. <laughs> I was just thinking, you imagine that amount of people coming in here for a 21st birthday party. The whole five acres would be full of people. 8,000 people. The number of men who ate were 4,000. They all ate, and I bet they got stuck into it. When you been, haven't had a feed for three days, <laughs> What do you feel like? Oh, you're pretty, pretty starving. You're pretty hungry, don't you? Okay, so these people and the baskets were full. So what, what were you wanting to centre on today, Ronnie? What's your centre word? Well, this is the word here. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God. You've got to give thanks to God. We heard in Psalm 30, give praise unto the Lord. So I will not be silent. A lot of you are getting around mouths like a tape across. You don't talk about the Lord. You don't talk about Jesus' love for you and to share that with other people. I know because I've done it myself. When I was working for these hundred men in my apprenticeship, I didn't go around telling them all about the Lord. There was a Jehovah's Witness there that I worked with. He told me about his, his uh, Jesus or his Jehovah. He told me that for about four years. Kept on about Jehovah this. I said, no, no I'm Pentecostal, mate. Pentecostal. Oh no, that's not very good. I can't see you inheriting the earth. Because <laughs> that's what they believe. They're going to inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. The Bible does say that. But Jehovah, uh, no. I'll give that a miss, uh, mate. He was actually in charge of the uh, wheel alignment steering. Um, he's, he was like the uh, professional wheel alignment man. So uh, he taught us how to align all the wheels and all that stuff. He died just a few years ago. He lives just down in Gosland, not far away from me. I saw his death notice in the paper because I do actually read the death notices to see what people are putting. I feel very sad when I see some people put gone fishing, playing golf in the big golf green in the sky, sailing in calmer waters, no, they may not be doing that, Ronnie. They might not be there. Okay, well, that is of concern to me. Okay, so I will not be silent. I will be a witness. I will give my testimony, my saving grace. I will sing praise to you, Lord. You are my God. I will give thanks to to you forever. Have you got that in your little noggin? Have you got that down in your heart? I will give thanks forever as the endless ages roll. We will thank you, Lord, that you redeemed us. You redeemed me. Why me? Because he loved you. He loved you so much. Come back to the Lord if you're... Oh, oh we've hit something here now. <laughs> I told you I was an evangelical preacher, prophetical evangel evangelical preacher and a watchman. So the Lord's just hit on something then. Now, we've got some backsliders watching. Backsliders. We used to know the way of the Lord. We used to go to church, sing His praise, read your Bible. But you had friends who said, No, not much future in that. Come along with me. We've got a dance going next next weekend. We've got karaoke. Come along and sing the worldly songs. 
Fetch Domino. Who's that other one that died just a few weeks ago? That little, uh, that little rocker. Just can't think of his name. That'll be the day when I die. Oh no, that was another <coughs> sore throat. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> sorry, I don't want this going on. We don't do any editing, unfortunately. A lot of people when they make a video, they cut out all the bad bits and just show all the good bits. But with me, you get the lot. Take it or leave it. You can go to another channel if you like, but you won't hear anything any better. <laughs> you won't hear the gospel, because I've watched them all. I've seen them all print and put in nice fancy pictures and great big ships burning and trail train wrecks. But it's the same gospel. It won't be any better, so you might as well stick with me. Put a like or dislike. Okay, so I will give thanks to the Lord forever. What have you learnt today? Here we go back. And the Lord gave thanks to God. I hope you believe in the Trinity. Are you a Trinitarian or not? So here we have Jesus giving thanks to the Father. Very clear picture of the Trinity. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Have you got the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit since you have believed? Go into the next stage of the power, the victory, the glory. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you have believed? Oh, I don't believe in that. I'm a Baptist. I know my auntie was a Baptist. I know all about the Baptist. I used to go to my auntie's Bible study. It was cold as ice. <laughs> there wasn't much spirit there. Just read the Bible. They just read this. And the disciples asked him, Where will we find enough food? Cold as ice. You need the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Charging a life with power, with zeal and zest. So God gave so Jesus God Jesus gave thanks to his heavenly father just read that little bit again verse 36 then he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God that's the secret if you want the blessing from God give thanks to God remember there was ten sick people healed Jesus healed them and they all ran away and only one one <laughs> one out of ten one out of ten we've done the percentages you know the percentage one out of ten one came back to thank the Lord thank you Lord you healed me I don't know what he had probably had a sore back thank you Lord for healing my sore back but all the other nine they just ran off Oh, we don't care. We've been healed there. So what? Instead of coming back and say, Lord, can I polish your, sh your sandals? Can I do something for you? What can I do for you, Lord? No, the nine ran off. The secret is to give thanks. To give praise forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise. That's what I have down the bottom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Never get sick of praising the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going through a rough storm. You know all about the storm. I've told you about the ship. We're going through the storm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Jesus is asleep in the ship, but he'll wake up and he'll come to your rescue. Hallelujah. Now, what's this? Oh, this, this date thing you've got here. What's this about? Here. 7th of March. What happened on the 7th of March? Okay, so let's go back to the highway of hell. That was on the 1st of March. I was down at Fremantle preaching the gospel in the street on the 14th of February. But on the 7th of March, I went out into the mall, into the mall, asking for people to come and pray for a cure for the coronavirus in three months. Okay, the world was in panic motion. Go back to my video, have a look. One in the street where I prayed. Nobody wanted to come and pray, even a couple of Christian guys. They said, oh no, they said, uh, you've got to get the coronavirus first. Oh really? 
What, you don't pray before? Are you born again? Oh yeah, we're born again. You, 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 you got to wait until they all get sick and then you, you can come and pray for them then. Oh no, I don't think that's right. Okay, so what happened? I went out in the street and prayed by myself. Nobody had joined me on the 7th of March. Prayed that the coronavirus would be dissipated or there would, there would be an answer come one way or the other in three months. So today, 7th of June, is exactly three months. So what happened? Oh, there was people sick and dying. But we had a good, the Lord raised up a good, um, a good uh, chap in charge. What do they call him? Can't even think of his name now. It must be the sore throat. Our good governor, our good uh, minister, prime minister, uh, the Christian prime minister is. Um, Christian prime minister, they raised him up and he put the whole Australia, he brought strict rules, he paid people to to stay home and still get their pay and money and the, Lord, and the Lord has moved miraculously, I feel like spitting it down in the south, great south land of the Holy Spirit the Lord did a miracle and today everybody is out just like they were in that three months period right on the knocker okay, so all I did was go out and pray the prayer of faith as I said, uh, I prayed the prayer of faith, and it's not a hope so faith, or a could be, possibly, but a no so faith, and the Lord has solved our problem in WA. There's a couple of people in hospital, not very many, they've all come in on those six ships, but they're pretty well gone now, and everyone's out now, back to their old ways. <laughs> I'll have to go out the street, that's why I'm wearing this hat again, this is the street hat, man, when we go out in the street. This is a street hour. We're going out in the street very soon. Okay, so the Lord's been good. Give praise to the Lord for answering prayer. And you can also go back to the other one in Fremantle. Pray for rain for the farmers. Just last week we had a beautiful lot of rain. And there's some more rain coming for the next three years. It's going to be good rain for the farmers. But will they give thanks? One out of ten. That's a pretty low percentage rate. But are you saved? That's the main thing today. Are you saved? Do you redeem? Born again? Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you for not changing the channels. But you're not sub subscribing for some reason. You forget to press the button. So I haven't got many subscribers. But that doesn't matter as long as you're saved. <laughs> As long as you'll say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's what you've got to do this week is praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Give thanks. Thank you, Jesus. That, that air that I'm breathing now, you get supplied it. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the job. Thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for the promises. Thank you for every good thing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah.